Hello, I would like to show you how easy it is to configure and support the PA10 product in heavy construction sites. As we know, the construction site is a dynamic place, and to make things easier, we have a configuration tool that I would like to show you about that will help us not just to configure a single machine, but also to, to configure groups and multiple machines. As you can see from the diagram, we have multiple different machine types on the construction site. We can group these into settings, and it makes it a lot easier to configure the machines out on the site. With that said, let's take a look at the configuration tool itself. In the configuration register tool, as you can see, I mentioned that it's easy to configure groups of vehicles. And this is done via the tree structure you see over here. Very simply right now, we're in one of my demo units overview page, and this will give us a list of all of the configured values that are installed on the vehicle. Let's get into a little bit more about the tree structure itself. Now that you have the visual in your head of the site that we showed before, it's really important to show that by gathering the right data from the site, knowing where you want to have uh, exclusion zones or potential speed limits on the site, we have a, a setting in the, in the system in the top of the tree that carries all of the, the, the site-wide settings. All of these settings relate specifically to the site. Every single list below it will carry those settings from above, which makes it really easy because you configure it just once for the construction site. When we move a little bit further down, we talk about the groups of vehicles. In this case here, we're grouping the light vehicles. In, in my case, these are the survey vehicles out on the site. Within the group setting, we also have various options that we can set specifically for this group of vehicles. And you can have multiple groups along the, the, the tree structure itself. Then we get into the actual model of the vehicle, and this is where details become a little bit more specific. In this case, it's a Toyota Hilux. So if I have a fleet of Toyota Hilux on the site, I only have to configure the dimensions once, and this can be then rolled out to multiple Toyota Hiluxes. The very last part of the tree setting is once you're under your, um, your, your type of vehicle or model, we then have specific units as such, and these carry uh, details that are specific to that unit. Um, in this case, you can see your GSM details are filled in over here. So the PIN code for your SIM card, that's very specific to that unit. Another very important one is the actual unit's identification number. And this is the kind of information that you'll find on the unit specific details. So with that said, that's a very um, broad overview of the configuration register. And it's really key to, to note that if you gather a lot of this data beforehand, so a lot of the information regarding the site and the vehicles and models you're going to configure, all of this work can be done at the comfort of your, of your office or your desk. Um, and that means when we get out to the site, which we will show um, through the SM tool, you will be eas uh, easily able to configure and, and load the configurations into the machine. So with the configuration complete in the configuration register, of course, we now access the SM tool. This is the area where we will load the configuration to the vehicle. Important to note that for the very first time the unit makes contact to the config register, it has to be a physical connection. So we connect uh, via cable, and very simply, we have the list um, in the configuration vehicles of the vehicles that are configured. We select that vehicle we want to configure, and very simply, push the upload file to CAS. A massively important thing to verify, once you have loaded your configuration, it's always best practice to go into the device info tab, hit the refresh button in the bottom corner there, and make sure that we have, firstly, the network activated. This then means that the device is ready for remote access and support, which we will touch on in the next section. But we also want to uh, verify that we have no fatal errors on the system. That's massively important. Once we have that done, then we're ready to look into the remote access support and configuration of the system. So now that we've verified that uh, there's no fatal errors and the system is online, we now have the ability to remote configure the device. And this is a real big improvement for the PA10 product. So very easily, 
I can go into my vehicles here, which is the Toyota Hilux, because we've had a request from site that we need to increase the personal alert distances. Very simply, in the, in the configuration zone, I can increase it from 20 to 25 meters, and I can say save. Once that configuration is saved, then very easily I just hit the publish button and say OK. It can, we can see that it successfully published the data. We can also see that the vehicle details go into bold text in the top corner here. And that's really important because it's going to give you an indication of what changes you have made. By looking at the machine overview, we can go into the personal alert settings. We can see that the distance we configured is 25 and the installed value is 20. The unit will take some time to upload the configuration based on the situation on site. Once it's safe to do so, we will see that the configuration has been uploaded. We can also hover over the text to see who made that change and when they made it. So from a, I've just shown you one example of how we can change one configuration parameter. Of course, this is valid for the entire list of settings. So it's really easy from that perspective that you can support your customers from a remote location. Finally, it's not always known out there, but all of the data generated from the PA10 standalone also finds its way to Connex. And this is where we can do our visualization and reporting. And this is where the end user can start making database decisions on the behavior and the trends that they track on the site. Let's have a look at how we can use the product from a support perspective. So if I go back to my SM tool, we are able to, to gather a lot of data online. Very simply here, if we have the downloads tab in the SM tool, you can see all of the data that has been uh, uploaded to the database from the unit out on site. We can select the dates and the times of data that we want to have a look at. Very simply hit the download button in the bottom. When we get to, the, to that area, we can then decide what type of data we want to download. Very simply, we can hit the convert button. And then we have a list of multiple options in which we can download data which relates to support of the product. So let me show you some of that data. Here we have an example of some of the statistics that can be downloaded from the SM tool. As you can see here in this specific example, I can see specific fatal errors that the unit has on site. In this case here, we can see some CAN errors on the system. This can be very useful from a support uh, perspective. And there are multiple sets of data that can be downloaded uh, to debug any situation on the site. From an analysis point of view, there's also very much, uh, there's also a lot of valid data that comes from an analysis point of view. So all of the alarms that are triggered on the site, we can get loads of information in regard to what type of alarm it was, when it was triggered, and this is a good, uh, a good way of being able to analyze the behavior of the system out on the site. So I hope you can see how easy it is to be able to configure and support the PA10 product. Thank you for watching.